two years ago, uh, me and my wife were expecting our son. Uh, I was excited and elated about bringing him in his new life, being a father, and uh, continued to pursue my education. And uh, had a conversation with the individual who works for the academy about my research, and pretty much just shot me down. Uh, his brother, someone who I looked up to, and uh, he said something that really just struck a nerve. He said, assumption without questions, conjecture without fact, dissertation format choice without acknowledgement or consideration, philosophical and programmatic guidelines, fall below expectations for mature doctoral student on and says effective immediately I resign as your chair and then you should look for other programs. So so at the time I was I was distraught, I was hurt, um, I didn't understand individual that I looked up to. I didn't understand what was happening. Um, but I knew God had my attention. So started to go on, started to go counseling and uh, was having some real issues with, with battling my demons and come to find out I had to forgive my father for a lot of things that happened when I was younger. So what happened was we had our son, dad comes back into the equation and says, Hey, I want to be in your life again and see your life. I forgave him. Bad father that I was. I was uh, writing a card, never forget it, a card for Father's Day. As I'm writing the card, uh, the person who wrote this letter just got a new job at the hospital. As I was writing the letter to my dad, something spoke to me and said, You should reach out to this person and congratulate them on this new position. As I was, I was, as I was writing, I just kept saying, "I'm, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not gonna happen." Um, but I just allowed myself just to move in the presence of God, and so I wrote the letter to my dad, gave him his first gift for Father's Day, contacted this individual, and said, "Congratulations, uh, thank you." Because I realized who I was and whose I was. So I graduated yesterday with four years. The average time it takes to finish a degree is two years. I finished at four. Um, and so I'm just. So the last thing I'm going to say is the research, the, the, the PhD that I got is uh, a rap album dissertation. So essentially, uh, I used to work for the University of Central Oklahoma, worked with black males. Uh, black males have the lowest retention and graduation rates amongst all students across the country, across the board. And I really wanted to figure out, you know, people always, people in the academy always say, you know, Black women are doing well, and white men are doing well, so obviously there's some problems with black men. And I really wanted to capture those experiences, those 
racist, anti-black experiences um, that these individuals face on a regular basis. And so as opposed to doing a traditional presentation, I said, let me use you know, black culture, this black, this blackness that we have, and so let's create this hip hop album to talk about those experiences. And so it's it's non-conventional, it's something that's never been done before, it's something that he couldn't comprehend. I mean, God gave me the vision for it. So I'm just excited and elated. I can't really talk about the next step yet, but uh, next steps are in place. Um, things are moving forward. Um, for those who don't know, I, I took a, a leap of faith. Uh, I worked six years as a CEO quit my job just to finish the dissertation. Because a lot of people don't understand that it takes significant taxes to run a business in Georgia. And I really just did not want to put my family in that position of being born in DC. And my wife had a plan that she was trying to um, shift. <laughs> so we finished it. And so I'm just excited. Envision, tried to reimagine what this thing was going to be, and uh, being able to express and just just be glad to be a part of this, this church now. I mean, for ten years, I've been coming to this church. I got my guys in the back, Caleb Gale and Chan Collins, and I'm just I'm just I'm just so glad to be a part of this church. And so, I thank you. I love you, you first lady. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a call. So, so, first of all, look at your neighbor and say, I'm better now, I'm better. I'm, touch them and tell them I'm better now. I don't, I don't care. I don't care if they reject you, if they tell you it won't work, if they tell you it won't come out. Ah, I'll preach that another day. So, Oh my God, sit down, sit down. Oh my God, ah. <laughs> so Stevie, so we talked to each other yesterday. He said, well, you know, in the, in the academy, when you uh, receive your PhD, um, they have a, a robing ceremony, hooding ceremony. And so he was like, you know, he was like, you should hood me, Pastor Coleman. Then I thought about it. No, 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 I don't need to hood you. I need, I need, we are not here because of the women in our lives. It's the women in our lives that make an impact on our life. And so not only does he honor his wife, but he honors his mother. And so can I, can I have, can you come up here, mother? Can you come up here? Come on, because we're going to do something. We're going we gonna, to we gonna hood you. We're going to hood you. We're going to. Ariel, come up here. Ariel, come on up here. Come on up here, mother. I just want to give a special shout out. It is Mother's Day. So I mentioned in uh, my speech on Friday, but um, my mom sacrificed a lot. She worked 12-hour uh, graveyard shifts. Um, she used a uh, P.O. box rubber uh, so I could go to a school on the other side of the tracks to get a better education. Um, and and what, I, what I also mentioned in my speech is that she didn't bribe university officials so I could go to the university. Yes, so I just want to say publicly in front of my church family that I love you, I adore you, I wouldn't be here without you. Whenever somebody talks to me, just say I'm Dr. Gary Jones, because that's who you are. So I just want to say I love you. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. This is something amazing happening in church today, y'all. I'm, I don't even know what to... Go ahead, put that on a Stevie. Put that on a Doc. Dr. Mary Johnson. Dr. Mary Johnson.
Come on, y'all. Give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. All right. Just touch two people around you and say, I seen something today. I seen, I seen something today. That's it. All right. Woo. Listen, listen. Can we give God a 30-second praise for what we just saw? Come on. Jump on your feet. Let's praise him. Come on. Somebody give them praise right now. Come on. You may be seated. Listen. Listen. That was absolutely awesome. Can I just, can I tell y'all, um, Stevie has set the bar for all of our young people. I want y'all to bear witness and to every parent in here, your child has PhD with their name on it. Did y'all hear what I said? I said, did you hear what I said? Somebody shout great things, great things. I am, so 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 today when church is over, y'all, because I believe this, this is just old church in me. If you see Stevie uh, there in the vestibule, you put something in his hand. Say amen, somebody. Don't get new church on me, go old church. Say old church. You put something in his hand, come on. That's how most of us, and the sacrifice it takes to get to this place. The commitment, all of that, y'all, is real. And I'm so happy he's a product of this place. You all don't know what my joy is. My soul is overflowing with joy for he and what God is going to do in his life. Amen. Come on, the brothers are going to bless you, and then we're going to bring the word. Come on, give God praise for the brothers. Let me remind everyone that we serve a great God through all of our trials and our tribulations. He said he would always be there. Said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. Said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. Said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. Oh, through the storm. Through the storm. And the rain. Through the rain. Through sickness. Through sickness. And pain. And pain. I know. God said he would be with me. Said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. Said he'd be with me. God said. He 
said, I'll be with me. God said he'd be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. He said, I'll be with me. God said he'd be with me. When I'm a job, I'll be with me. In my home, I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. God said he'd be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. Through thick and thin, I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. Until God the end. said he'd be with me. God said it. 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 He would be with me. I'll be with me. Yeah. I'll be with me. He said, I'll be with me. God said, he'd be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. Through thick and thin. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. Until God the said, end. be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. He'd be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. God said, he'd be with me. On my job. I'll be with me. And in my home. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. I'll be with me. I'll be with me. He'd be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. He'd be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. God said it'd be with me. God said it. God said. 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 He would be with me. I'll be with me. Yeah. I'll be with me. I'll be with me. God said he'd be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. He would be with me. I'll be with me. God said he'd be with me. Oh, through storm through and the rain, through, rain. through sickness, sickness and pain, and pain. Through, the storm through the storm and the rain. Said he'd be with me. God said he would. Said he would be with me. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm calling the scripture. Just said, can I visit a stand real quick? I want to recognize all our visitors. Even those that came from Longview, Texas. Let me do that real quickly. I had some people come in from New Orleans. Uh, the Coleman's, where y'all at? Uh, we, we didn't know each other today, but we related somehow. Amen. Somebody give God praise for all of our visitors. We're happy. Good to have y'all here. Now everybody stand on your feet. Have your Bibles go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 31st verse. Give you all this real quickly. Y'all jump on board real quick. Hebrews 11.31, uh, amen, people of God say amen, come on y'all get on board real quick and we're going we gonna to move out of here, Hebrews 11.31, when you found it, shot, I got it, amen, amen, if that wasn't good, when you found it, shot, I got it, <laughs> amen, Hebrews 11.31, y'all got it, it says by faith the prostitute Rahab perished not with them that believed, not when she had received the spies with peace. By faith, the prostitute Rahab perished not, in other words, she did not perish with them that did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Go to Joshua, the second chapter. Joshua, the second chapter, one more verse. Uh-huh. Joshua, the second chapter, starting at verse number one. Y'all got it? Joshua 2, 1. It said, now Joshua, the son of Nun, went sent spies to uh, sent out two men from a case it row. The spies secretly saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and lodged there. At, at 830 service, I preached uh, the God of anybody. I said I was going to preach to my hood and holy service. At 10.30, uh, you don't know me like that. You may be seated. You don't know me. You don't know me like that. Uh-huh. 
A few weeks prior to Easter, the History Channel had a series on during the Lenten season entitled Jesus the Life. Somebody say Jesus the Life. Each episode covered the life of Jesus from his birth to his death to his resurrection. The final episode, of course, was the resurrection. But what the producers did was connect the resurrection of Jesus to the call of Peter. Everybody say Peter. So in one of the final scenes, in order to, to show that the movement of Jesus, the Jesus started, was going to continue, uh, they journeyed back to his first encounter with Peter. Everybody say Peter. During the reenactment of the scene, they had scholars and theologians comment on the historicity of the encounter between Jesus and Peter. Uh, one commentator says that as the Bible says, Andrew introduces Jesus to Peter and Jesus takes a liking to him. Somebody say liking. Shout it, liking. Now this, according to the scholars, was strange because Jesus was considered a rabbi, uh, but he took a liking to Peter, but it was strange uh, because Peter was not educated. Peter was not schooled in the Torah. Peter was not rich. Peter was not famous. Peter was not popular. In fact, the, the theologian says Peter was quite the opposite. He was a fisherman with a hot temper. He was quick to fly off the handle, and he was a certified cusser. Somebody say yes. P Peter didn't fit the model uh, that people would have thought he would have fit. And from all appearances, Peter's pedigree would not qualify him to be a disciple. Somebody say disciple. Shout it louder. Say disciple. The scholar then is asked the question, why did Jesus take to Peter and make him the chief apostle? Why did Jesus take Peter and make him the head disciple? Why would Jesus take somebody who didn't fit the qualifications really to be a disciple of a rabbi and he made him the head of the church? Of all the disciples, why did Jesus choose Peter? Bring him closer to him, disciple him, and make him heir to the movement. Uh, the theologian gives this answer, and this answer has stuck with me for the last month and it's proven to be so true. Here's what the theologian says on this episode of History Channel. He says, I think Jesus chose Peter, called Peter, selected Peter because God has an affinity for problem children. Yeah, that one line did it for me. God has an affinity for problem children. Because I thought to say to myself, uh, as we gather this morning, let us all admit and take the mask off. We have all, at one point in time, been problem children for God. Now, I know some of y'all are too sanctimonious to admit it. You're so, you're so holy, you're crooked, your halo is crooked on your head. You would never admit it. But the real folk in here were to admit that there have been times when I've been God's problem child. Say yes, y'all. But here it is. We also realize that God has an affinity, affinity for those of us who are not perfect, those of us who make mistakes, those of us who got flaws. In fact, what we've come to realize is that we should not, we bet not, we won't even think about judging other people because when we look at how God has given grace to each one of us, each one of us ought to give God praise. Who are you to judge anybody when God has been good to you? Who are you to look down your nose at anybody when God God's been kind to you. Who are you to look down your nose and think that other folk are better? You better than other folk. Everybody in here, you ain't always dotted every I. You ain't always crossed every T, but God has been good to you. Can I get some real folk at 1030 service that are willing to admit, I'm, you might see me today, but how I look today is not how I've always looked. Is there anybody in history that can testify? You catch me a couple weeks ago, I was a hot mess. A couple years ago, I was messed up but can I find some real rough riders at 10 30 to declare but his grace and his mercy slap your neighbor say mercy got me here uh-huh uh-huh that's the truth, beloved. When you consider how you share the goodness of God, the grace of God, here is what you got to have in your arsenal. I'm not going to keep y'all long. The number one line that you ought to tell everybody in your life is this. God can use anybody. Somebody say anybody. Y'all going to miss a good sermon here. Say God can use anybody. Yes, if no other statement that you ought to have on the tip of your tongue when you need to give encouragement to the weary, to the worn, and to the wounded ought to be one line, God can use anybody. Say anybody. This is not just a statement said without evidence or proof there too. God has a record doing what man fails at doing it every time. That is using someone that others don't believe can be used. Say yes, y'all. 
In fact, an argument can be raised that when God prepares to do something major, he always finds somebody that others passed over. Somebody say yes. A part of God's plans includes using somebody uh, that nobody else would have used. One of my favorite authors is Brennan Manning. And Brennan Manning calls these type of people ragamuffins. Somebody say ragamuffin. A ragamuffin is somebody who has not crossed every crossed every T and dotted every I, but was open for God to fulfill his purpose. Let me give you that line again so you won't forget. God can use anybody. Say anybody. Shout it, y'all. Say anybody. Now, this statement is not problematic for those in the world. Watch the transition in the sermon. This statement that God can use anybody is not problematic for people in the world. Hear me once again. I'll slow it down. The statement that God can use anybody is not problematic for the world because the world just wants real people. But this problem is a this statement is a problem for folk in the church. See, the world believes if you just real, we can kick it. But the church, on the other hand, promotes this idea that there is some pseudo standard that has to be met in order to be liked by us and used by God. The church promotes this idea that before God calls you, before God uses you, before he commissions you, he first got to clean you. That if you don't meet some false middle class standard of what it means to be a citizen, God will overlook you. If your grades don't reflect home training and you don't carry a 4.0 every semester, God will be bypass you. If you don't come from a two parent household from the birds, God doesn't want to have anything to do with you. If you up in years it's too late for something miraculous to happen in your life if you make mistake after mistake surely can't God can't summon you to a new assignment these are cliches and thoughts and ideas that rest in the mind of those in church who believe God calls the equipped let me make it very clear those are erroneous and false errors because God does not call the equipped but he equips to call somebody say yes God wants folk that others have written off. God wants folk that others have forgotten about. God wants folk that other people have thrown in the trash. Because the reality is, you are the best testimony that could ever be when God can take you from nothing and bring you into something. I got 50 people in here that could jump up right now because you didn't start where you are right now. I, I said, you didn't start. Y'all not helping me. Slap your neighbor and say, you didn't start where you are right now. You've been through some hell to get here. You've been through some pain to get here. You've been through some agony to get here. Some folk threw you away, but God brought you closer. Some folk forgot about you, but God remembered you. Can I find 50 people in here that can give God a shout? Wait a minute. 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 Pastor Coleman, did you say God can use anybody? Did I say that? Y'all not talking to me. Did I say that? D -d did I say anybody? Well, I had to check the record, Malachi, to make sure Pastor Coleman was preaching right. He can use anybody. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was unattractive. Joseph was abused. Moses was a stutterer. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Timothy was too young. David had an affair. And he was a murderer. Elijah preached naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went broke. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep. Martha worried. Zacchaeus was too short. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. Lazarus was dead. Slap your neighbor. Say, what's your issue, boo? Everybody got an issue. But your issue will not keep you from being blessed by God. Your issue won't keep you from being used by God. I wish I had 50 Rough Riders in here that could testify. I got some issues, but he keeps waking me up in the morning. He keeps putting food on my... He keeps putting clothes on my... Slap your neighbor and say, I got some issues, boo. Uh, 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 <laughs> Why y'all play with me? Because, because here it is, here it is, coach. Because no matter your issue, if God is in the mix, God can work with anything. I want to help somebody today. Just give me 10 minutes. Here it is. Don't you ever write yourself off. Thank you, Stevie, Dr. Stevie. When your enemy puts in ink, 
your rejection letter. But there's something greater inside of you that's greater than the ink on the paper. Something on the inside says, don't worry about what they say. Keep your hand in the mouth. Y'all play with me, stop. Well, it is, it is, Whitaker. If ever there's a story in the Bible that messes up your conventional thinking, if ever there's a story in the Bible, Hebrews, the 13th chapter, sets you up. Because if you read it, start reading it from the beginning, it, it makes sense. That's called the heroes of faith. Abraham, uh, Abel, offered a better sacrifice. Sounds good. Enoch walked with God. Makes sense. Noah built an ark. Sounds good. Abraham father of faith. Sarah conceived a baby at an old age. Read the names, y'all. Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Joseph, Moses. They all make sense. Till you get to that 31st verse. And there's a name listed that is unusual. It said, by faith, Rahab the prostitute received the spies in peace and didn't perish with those who, what, what, did I read that right? Rahab the streetwalker. You, 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 you telling me, Pastor Coleman, on Mother's Day, you, you can't preach about somebody else that's less controversial. Y'all ain't gonna help a black man preach today. You, you mean I came to church and, and, and you gonna talk about a prostitute? See, see, aren't there any other women in the Bible that you could have chosen that were more respectable than choosing Sister Rahab? Yeah, yeah, I could preach somebody else, but the truth is to ignore her would be what the church does to many people who live on the margin. When God calls her right to the center, shut up, Coleman. You don't want her name there, but God put her name there. And I got news for some of y'all. When they don't want your name, God wants your name. Is there anybody at Fifth Street? Yeah. She, she's listed amongst the heroes of the faith. But here's God. Watch this now. Watch this. The children of Israel are leaving wilderness going into Canaan. But in order for them to get into Canaan, and they got to go through Jericho. So they needed spies to spy out the land. Joshua pulls up two spies and says, y'all go look and see. Hold on, Derek. The person that he chooses to connect them to, from the wilderness to Canaan is a prostitute. You mean what no other sisters in Jericho? Y'all ain't gonna help a black man preach today. Uh-huh. Let, let me leap off right here. What has to be highlighted first and foremost, God, mm, let me just say this. Uh, man don't call you, God calls you. Let me say that for the people next to you. Far too often we write ourselves off because we're waiting on man's approval for God to call you. We believe that God has the final say when it comes to your calling and being used. Let me help somebody in here. Don't place your destiny in the hands of fragile, broken people. God does the calling. And in his hands, you're safe. Sometimes we look to people to affirm our gifts, affirm our assignment, affirm my call, affirm my decision, affirm what God is doing. Beloved, stop. If God spoke it to you, then wait no man's approval is disobedience. You got to do what God says do. The book said man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. What, what you look like on the outside does not matter to God. God wants to know what does your heart look like. Let's be honest in here. If you had to choose someone who you admire in the Bible, none of us, including your pastor, would have chose Rahab. But thanks be unto God, we don't do the calling. God does the calling. Somebody say yes. 
Don't let these so-called religious folk set you up by making you believe that God can't use you. God can't call you. You've made too many mistakes. Let me blow your mind. Your life is not in their hands. Your assignment is not in their hands. Your vision is not in their hands. Your job is not in their hands. Your destiny is not in their hands. I would rather you ignore me than to talk to me because my life is not in your hands. Can I find 50 people in here that know that your life is in God's hand? Your job is in God's God's hand, your assignment is God's hand, your money's in God. Is there anybody that could jump up and shout, It's in His hands? Everything I have. So whether you like me or not, I don't care because I ain't here for you, boo boo. I'm here for God. Somebody give him a shout, right? Book says, Book says, Joshua sent spots by the land. They got to conquer the land in order to get their inheritance. Everything was ready. At this point, it appears God hadn't given Joshua instruction. So he sends the two men to spy the land. Upon arriving in Jericho, they stayed at the house of Rahab. What was her profession, y'all? See, I got quiet in church. You see that? You see, I know what I'm doing. You see that? Because y'all don't want to say it. Uh, now, don't miss this. Rahab from the outside had three strikes against her. Look at me, y'all. She was a woman. Women were not revered in that culture. She was a Gentile. She wasn't a part of the original Abrahamic covenant. She was a prostitute. Her profession was one of the outcasts. Y'all gonna miss a shout. She had three strikes. She was a woman. Women were not revered in that culture. She was a Gentile. She was not in the Abrahamic covenant. And she was a prostitute. She was an outcast. Shut up, Coleman. She had three strikes against her. She was a woman. Women were not reviewed in that culture. She was a Gentile. She was outside the Abrahamic covenant. And she was a prostitute. She was an outcast in her profession. But God saw fit to use the woman, to use the Gentile, and to use the prostitute. Don't you ever think that God can't use somebody. I don't care what they've done. I don't care what you've done. There is no mistake God cannot forgive. There is no fault that God can't heal you from. Some of y'all in here ought to be giving God a crazy praise because he looked past your craziness, your nastiness, your dirtiness, and he still will. I wish I had some humble people that will say, Pastor, you on my street? I ain't always dotted every eye. I stayed out too late some night. I woke up in beds. I didn't know where I was the night before. Is there anybody in here? Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. So Rahab, Rahab, heard about God. It is. First thing, I'm going to give it to you real quick. Rahab heard about God. Say she heard about God. All right, so there was a rumor about God. It says it in Joshua 2. And she heard about him. She heard he could be way making. She heard he could part Red Sea. Not only did she hear about him. Watch this. I'm almost done. She participated in her own liberation. This is why you can't write folk off. Because God is not looking for cute folk who listen. But he wants folk who are willing to roll up their sleeves and participate in God's plan. Nobody amongst the Israelites would have chosen Rahab to help in the plan of liberation. So God chose her. He chose her because God is not concerned. Here it is about what you've done in your past. Huh. Lean on that cone. Look at me. I don't care what you've done. There's nothing in your past that keeps God from using you. I'm about to liberate five of y'all. Pastor, you don't know what I used to do. I know. God knows. But there's nothing you could have ever done that cancels God's assignment on your life. Pastor, you know I was out there. So was he. Hold on, Derek. Pastor, I've been on the rough side. I, he knows. God ain't concerned about your mistakes. He's not concerned about how many times you fell down. All God wants to know, are you willing to participate in your liberation today? Let, let me make it more plain. The only prerequisite that God has for us is not your pedigree, it's not your ethnicity, it's not your qualifications. All he wants to know is, are you available? Sister Rahab did not meet man's requirement, but she met God's requirement. Can I tell you, as long as I'm meeting God's requirements, I really don't care what you think about me. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I be honest? 
can, can I be honest? Let me let me just be let me be let me be honest as if I haven't been. Let me be honest. You ought to learn to celebrate when you no longer care about other people's opinions of you. I, 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 if I had five, we do you remember the day when you were like Psh. when you literally said, Okay, I got it, God. I need to let their opinion of me go. Because I really, I don't like them. And, and they really are just insecure about what you're doing in my life. And that's the problem they have. So, so you can call me crazy. I ain't in this for you, boo-boo. I'm in this because I want him to get the glory. Can I find 50 people in here that can testify? You can be messed up, but he'll use you. You can be messed over, but he'll still use you. You can be broke and broken, lonely, lost, shook, shaken, weary, worn. All God wants to know, Lord, here am I, send me. Is there anybody in here that's willing to give themselves wholly to God and know that your past can be used to project you into your future? Maybe. I'm out here, it is. Verse 6 says, she hid the spies and covered them, covered up for them. She put them on her roof, put some stuff on top of them. Um, I said it at 8.30. I said, maybe, Darlene, God chose Rahab to do dirty work because she was in a dirty business. Why y'all, y'all got real church folk, y'all crazy. Because if you're not willing to get dirt up under your nails, maybe God don't want to have nothing to do with you. If you ain't willing to do the hard work it takes to liberate and help and empower people, maybe God don't want to fool with you. God is looking for folk that are willing to get down and do what needs to be done in order to liberate folk everywhere. And, And I got a problem. We got too many cute folk. That's why freedom hadn't come to us yet. You too busy being cute when we got neighborhoods torn apart. We got kids uneducated. You don't want to do the dirty work. You want to come and sit in church. Negro, have you lost your mind? You better act like you want to get to work. Maybe you need to stay at home and watch TV. But some of us in here about the work of lifting, of building, of educating. Can I get 20 people in here that can jump up right now and give God glory? Slap your neighbor, say, dirty work, dirty work, dirty work, dirty work, dirty work. I said, dirty work. You got to do what you got to do to get what you got to get, and it takes work. Somebody give them glory right now. I'm out. I'm out. Here it is. Y'all got it. God can use what? Uh Uh-uh, say what? Last one, I'm out. God used Rahab because she was willing to hear about God. She was willing to participate in her own liberation. Three, I'm out of here. She wasn't in it for herself. She tells the men, she says, when y'all come back to destroy the city, I got one request. Save me and my family. It is plenty of self-righteous people, so-called religious folk, who will step over you just to get to what they want. Rahab became help, and she got help. Don't miss it. Rahab became help, and she got help. There are generations dependent on your actions right now. I'm not just speaking about folk in your bloodline. I'm talking about folk in your community, in your neighborhood, and on your block. You can't cross over into Canaan, shout, I'm free, and everybody else is still in the wilderness. Because if we ain't free, I wish I had help in here. You ain't free. At some point, you got to start saying to yourself that every move I make is for my children, is for my grandchildren, is for my community, is for my neighborhood. Are y'all going to shout on that? Because here it is. Everything you do, from what you do in church, to what you do in the community, to what you do in your house, it's connected to your children. It's connected to your lineage. It's connected to your line. It's connected to your neighborhood. Here it is. Because it's easy to give a selfish praise. It's easy to praise God just for yourself. But when is the last time you told God, this praise that I'm giving you is for my children. It's for my grandchildren. It's for my neighborhood. It's for my community. 
and I wish I had 50 people that would start praising God and say, this one is not just for me. I'm praising you so you can put a covering over my house, over my children, over my family. Can I get some rough riders that could start giving God praise for your job, for your health? Is there anybody in here that's willing to, if you're not willing to do it, don't worry about it. But I need somebody to say, no, 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 no. I'm going to praise you because I want blessings to come down. I want miracles to come down. I want joy to come down. Somebody give them praise, not just Pastor Coleman, I came to church and you preached about a prostitute. Ray have heard from God. She participated on liberation. She didn't do it just for herself. Uh, yeah. Some people still skeeve by the word prostitute. Well, if you don't like Rahab, then you don't like Jesus. Because when they come to destroy the city, she puts a scarlet thread over her roof. Scarlet is the color what? Red. Well, when they came in to destroy the city, they bypassed her house because it was a scarlet thread. I have flashbacks. This is similar to the story in Exodus. Just before they left Egypt. They told every Israelite, put blood on your door. And when the death angel comes in, y'all better help a black man preach in here. So she puts a scarlet thread on her house. So when they come to destroy it, her house gets saved. Well, you got to do the genealogy on this. Um, Rahab is the great, great grandmama of Jesus. So if you don't like Jesus, then you don't like Rahab. And if you don't like Rahab, Oh, y'all want me to prove it? Prove it, Coleman. Uh, Ruth meets Boaz. Boaz redeems Ruth and marries her. When you get to the end of the book of Ruth, it begins with the genealogy of David. It begins with Perez, who was the son of Judah and Tamar. And then it traces the lineage of Salmon, who was the father of Boaz by Rahab. Then Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth. Obed fathered Jesse. Jesse fathered David. And y'all know where David comes from. So in other words, if you don't like Rahab, then you need to become a Muslim today. Because his great-great-grandmama was a prostitute. And if God can use her, then God can use you. If God can use her, then God can use you. If God can use her, then God can use you. So you take your sanctimony yourself and find another church. I got some folk in here that can testify that because I'm in the bloodline of Jesus, my great, 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 great grandmama was a prostitute. Is there anybody in here that knows that God can use anybody? Jump on your feet and give God glory right now. If he can use her, he can use you. If he can use her, he can use you. Slap your neighbor, say he can use you. Slap your neighbor, say he can use you. High five your neighbor, say he can use you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Let somebody give him praise right now. He deserves your best. There it is. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Y'all ready? you look down your nose at nobody. Your savior's great great grandma ran a house of ill repute. I know. I know. I know. You mean I came all the way and that's the Mother's Day sermon? Yes. Because why? Because God is sick of church folk. see somebody doing something that they ought not do, but you judge them.
because if it wasn't for the grace of God on your life, you might be doing what they're doing. Can I get some help from some folk in here? Somebody shout, anybody, anybody. That's it. I love, I love uh, Keith, I love Rahab because I need to do a series entitled Hood and Hope. Because, because here it is, let me tell you why. Because, because, because the problem, the problem, the problem is not with the world. That's not the problem. Because the world, the world will take you as you are. Right? The, the world will take you as you are. God wants to know, are you willing to accept people in the midst of their brokenness and still claim that they can be used by God? Right? Uh, let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest. I, and so I'm done. I'm done. God can use anybody. No matter where you come from. No matter where you are. No matter what you've done. God can use you. Somebody say, I know that's right. I know. He's the God of another chance. So don't ever, don't ever write somebody off. How many times should God have written you off? I'm talking about the stuff you can't tell your name. Huh? The stuff you can't tell. Just touch him and say, I can't tell you that. I can't. No, tell him, I can't tell you that. You might change your seat. But can I give you the shout? They can change their seat. God never changes his seat. Because he can use. Say it again. Say it again. Now give God praise if you believe that today. Look at me. I'm almost done. Here it is. Look at me. You got to get over this fact, y'all. You will miss your opportunity to share God if you look at a person and tell them they're too far gone. Ain't nobody that far gone. You telling me in the lineage of all of the heroes, God puts right there Rahab, the prostitute. Don't tell me that wasn't intentional. God wanted all of the broken people that can't identify with Abraham, that can't identify with Isaac, they can't identify with Jacob. He wants all of the people that can't identify with them to get to. He chose who? Well, if he can choose her, yeah, yeah. he can choose me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can use who? Anybody. Give him praise right there. Anybody. You can use me. Use Lift your hands if you believe that today. If you can use anything, Lord. You can use me. <laughs> yeah. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Search my heart. Search my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. How many of y'all believe that? We getting ready to go. Come on, lift your hands. Come on. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I believe.